The needs of the many can be satisfied by the skills of the few. This week is the Vulcan 2. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today is the turn of the AGT Vulcan 2 and I've been looking forward to this one because I was really impressed with the Vixen and the Uragan from the guys at AGT. So much so that I bought a Vixen and I love it. And I'm now trying to justify a Uragan in the collection. So, this Vulcan 2 has a lot to live up to with its siblings that I've tested so far. My fear is that it is going to be that good and then the want list is going to increase and I'm going to need to earn some serious brownie points at home. A few stats to start with, along with what you get in the box. This is the all black synthetic version and tips the scales at 3.7 kilograms unscoped. It has an overall length of 760 millimeters, which is 60 millimeters longer than the Vulcan 1 predecessor. The barrel length is 500 millimeters, which is again longer than the Vulcan 1 by 50 millimeters. The barrel is the tried, tested and competition winning cold hammer forged CZ barrel with its excellent reputation. So it's already got its work cut out in terms of accuracy promises. So what does it come with before we take a closer look? As we're starting to expect from AJT, it comes with a plethora of goodies in the box. Firstly, the high quality AGT padded carry bag, which is big enough to be able to still cover the gun even with your fitted scope of choice. There are two magazines, spare O-rings, AGT pen and key ring and bottle filler adapter and fill probe, which I have grown to like and prefer. Let's do the walk around now, shall we? This is, as I've said, all black and I feel looks absolutely stunning. I'm normally not a fan of bold white lettering on guns. I feel they have a tendency to spoil the overall look. But the simplicity and font used on the AGT guns seem to complement the overall look in a less is more manner. Vulcan 2. Enough said. The eagle-eyed amongst you will probably have noticed this bears more than a passing resemblance to the calibre gun cricket about it. Well, there is a very good reason for this, and the factories themselves are pretty much in the same town, and they may well be a bit of cross-fertilisation of designers mixed in there. I'll say no more. Starting from the front, the shrouded barrel is beautifully engineered and very quiet, but still has a threaded half-inch UNF end to add an additional amount of sound suppression if you feel it's needed. But it is very quiet in its standard form, certainly in this sub-12 foot-pound version. Below this is the air cylinder, which is getting on for 300cc capacity, which is a big capacity cylinder and yet is nicely hidden with the really nice rubberized feel polymer bullpup stock. The clear to read black on white AGT labelled air gauge is simple to manage the max fill pressure of 250 bar. Yes, I would argue that the gauge should be better placed in terms of safe to read positioning, but construction design dictates that positioning. The filler port is just behind with this really nice and super smooth rotating dust cover. The scope rail is Weaver Picatinny design and is raised slightly on the top to help get the correct eye to scope alignment. Below this is the biathlon style lever action, which as you would expect is super smooth with a nice back and forward 
click action, which adds to that all important engineered feel. The important point to note here is this is on the left hand side, but swapping over to the right hand side is very, very simple, making this gun not only ambidextrous, but able to suit anyone's preferred positioning around which side they want. Below this is the match grade two stage trigger, which is beautiful with a nice short first stage and a lighter second stage. The safety is built into the trigger guard and only works if the gun is cocked. It is sure footed and definite and non obstructive forward of the trigger. It is forward for fire, back for safe. The grip is slightly rear sloping and very comfortable, ergonomically shaped and slightly bulbous, giving me certainly a nice trigger finger positioning. Moving back further still, the cheek rest has been changed from the alloy version on the Vulcan 1 to a more comfortable synthetic version, which is also warmer to the feel on colder days. Below this is the magazine slot, which takes the standard AGT magazines and as with its siblings, this slots in from the left and sits beautifully symmetrical and completely unobtrusive for left or right handed users. This is the 177 version, but is available in 177, 22, 25, and the new 0.30 caliber version. Right at the rear is the rubberized butt pad that is also adjustable to help get that best scope alignment. The only thing left to mention is the superior rail system on the underside of the front of the gun, hinting at the owner of the company's background of 20 years in field target shooting, maybe. Overall, I realise looks are very subjective and a personal thing, but I really do love the Vulcan 2 in its simple, clean and functional lines without being bold and brash and flash. I suppose you could say it's logical. Let's take a look at the power output then, shall we? Like I said, this is the sub 12 foot pound version and over the chronograph using the 8.64 grain BSA gold stars, this saw 782 feet per second, which equates to 11.74 foot pounds or 15.91 joules, which is pretty perfectly set up for a sub 12 foot pound gun. With a decent scope on this, it's time to get out on the range to see if all this carefully built quality and engineering can prove itself over 40 meters in this case. Here goes. Okay, here we are out at 40 meters, um, autumn day, bit overcast, bit dark today, to be honest, but hey, 34 millimeter scope on it or 34 millimeter tube uh, beautiful continental scope um, I've actually had a, a zero in with this so I know what's coming and believe you me I am blown away by it uh, this shouldn't really be a difficult task uh, see what you think of these results I'm out. I love it. Yeah, I really, really love it. The big question is, which do you have? The Uragan, the Vixen, 
the Vulcan. Simple answer is all of them, if you can afford it. Absolutely top, top drawer. Yeah, top drawer. And all I'm using is standard BSA Gold Stars. Not hand picked, not weighed, not clean, nothing. Just straightforward out of the tin, 177 BSA Gold Stars. And it's just eating them up all the way. Fantastic. <laughs> It took just four shots to zero and then on with the filming. These AGTs are so, so accurate. I can see why the CZ barrel has taken so many trophies in competitions. I would love to put these against some of those electronic driven rifles that are coming off the production line these days. Well, it had its work cut out to be worthy of its siblings, the Vixen and the Uragan, but I would say it's positioned itself firmly in the camp with them. I realise we're talking higher end here in terms of accuracy, build quality and overall feel and experience in use. And as such, this comes in the higher price range and is likely to set you back around £1,495 UK. But this is a top end gun and no mistake about it. I realise it isn't everyone who can afford one of these, but for those who can, they aren't going to be disappointed. It really is up there with some of the best guns of 2021, and indeed up there with some of the best guns that I've used. It is certainly exclusive and will turn heads at the range and get a lot of interest from people wanting to know more about it and wanting to know why your results are better than theirs most likely. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with this one from AGT and the part I am not too happy about is the fact that I'm going to need to hand this back to Vector Air for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you have, then click the thumbs up, subscribe, share, and click the notification alarm bell. Why not keep Mrs. AAR on her toes with the AAR merch available from here? A big thank you to the guys at AGT for their care and attention to detail when making this Vulcan. And of course, a big thank you to Vector Air for getting hold of these beautiful guns for me to review. I'm thinking of a three-way shootout between the Vixen, Uragan and the Vulcan at some point in the future and get Mrs. AAR involved. What do you think? Any excuse really to get my hands on all three of these again? Of course, a big thank you to you guys for your support and for watching. It just leaves me to say, please stay safe and shoot safe and hopefully I'll see you next week. Whoa. Bye for now.